And Mr. Foreman, any witnesses? Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls Timothy Lewis to the stand. Okay. And Mr. Lewis, if you just come on up, and before you have a seat, just stand right there. Mr. Lewis, can I have you to raise your right hand? Do you sign it? That's all right. Do you sign the spirit to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Just have a seat right there. Good afternoon, Mr. Lewis. Hello. Um, could you please state your name and address for the record? Um, Timothy Aaron Lewis. I live at 6808 Green Manor Drive. Louisville, Kentucky. That's in High View, just off Fagin Bush Line. And how do you know Eddie Hall? Uh, I met him about 13, 14 years ago through a friend uh, I worked with that introduced us. I want to take you back to the events that transpired on September 15th. Uh, 2018 last year, okay? Yes, sir. Uh, actually, we're going to talk about the 14th going on to the 15th, right? Yes. Could you tell the ladies and the ladies and gentlemen, I think we have only one male, <laughs> of the jury, uh, what were you doing uh, on the night of September 14th leading into September 15th? Uh, I was I was at home hanging out with my brother and, well, mainly my brother. My mom made dinner and me and my brother hang out whenever he comes to the house because he moved out. So whenever we can catch up, we catch up and usually drink alcohol when we're doing so. That's just what we do generally. But, uh, yeah, I drank uh, one big can of something called a Four Loco, and then I opened another one and poured it on ice in a cup, and uh, I waited on my friend Eddie to get done doing whatever he was doing to come pick me up because he needed help fixing up his house. Uh, I'm pretty good with woodwork and things. He, his deck is messed up, so I was going to help him fix his deck the next day, the next morning. So he came and picked me up at about midnight. And uh, we started going towards his house. and. We got pulled over, basically, uh, just minutes from his house, 15, 20 minutes after he picked me up. I, I had an open container in his truck, drinking it. That's my fault. You know, I shouldn't have done that. Um, he didn't drink a thing. I know that for a fact. Um, it was me drinking. I was, I don't know what, it, it don't really matter what level of drunkenness I was, but I know he didn't drink a thing. And While you were with him, right? Because you, yes, you can't testify as to what he was doing before. Right, right. He came to pick you up. Yeah, I was with him for 20 minutes, something like that before we got pulled over. I, I remember everything that happened. I wasn't you know, out of it or anything like that. What was um, Eddie's demeanor when he came to pick you up and, and then drove over to his house? Um, he, he was just real quiet, really. He seemed tired. I think it was a Friday. Yes, a long work week. He just seemed tired and beat. He's like, hurry up, man. Come on. Get in the truck. Let's ride. Got to get up early and start on his deck. After uh, he got pulled over, were you approached by any of the officers? Uh, yes, sir. Do you remember who it was? Uh, 
Is it the officer seated at council table or was it the other officer? It was the other officer. So it was Officer Batcher? Yes, Officer Batcher. I remember it was, it was him, it was a younger guy about my age. Yeah, it was Officer Batcher. He uh, walked up to me and said, asked me to you know, place my hands where he could see him and asked me if I had anything illegal on me. I said, no, but I have this beverage. I, I still had my drink in my hand. He asked me to pour it out. I took another drink and poured it out the window. And uh, Were you arrested after this ordeal? No, sir. Where did you go? I went to Eddie's house. How did you get there? I got there, an officer, I don't know his name, another officer um, just gave me a ride to my friend's house. No further questions. Mr. Armstrong. Thank you, Judge. Um, Mr. Lewis, uh, is the 6808 Green Manor Drive in Louisville or is it in uh, Bullet, is it Jefferson County or Bullock County? Jefferson. So it's actually in the Louisville side of Highview, right? Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I can see you nodding your head, but the record needs to have you speak. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, and and uh, your friend Eddie, Ed, that's Edward Hall, correct? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Eddie picked you up approximately midnight? Yes. All right. And you all got stopped? 20 minutes or so later? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, so when the police officer says uh, uh, 1232, that's about right, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You don't have any idea where Eddie was prior to midnight? Uh, I mean, he was at work. Where, where's work? J-Town. Okay. He was, he was just around there completing his task. I think he said he was going to go get something to eat. There was something called J-Town Festival going on. They have great food and stuff. Gaslight Festival? Or, yeah, yeah, okay. Gaslight Festival. Gaslight Festival also has alcohol, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, where did, Do you work with Mr. Hall? No, sir. Where Do you know where he works? I know the location. What's? Do you know the name of the business? Uh, Kaufman Carpet Cleaning okay. and, and Carpet Restoration. Okay. And... Um, you said you had at your house, you were with your mother, your brother, you, and was there somebody else there? Father. Father, okay. And you had one big can of, and I didn't catch what it was. It was it's called Four Loco. L-O-G-O? L-O-C-O. It's, it's just a strong, it was an apple flavored, strong, fruity drink. Okay, and you drank one of those and then Poured another one Started in the cup. Started on another, yes, sir. All right. Well, the other one in the cup, is that what you had with you that night in the in the truck? Yes, sir. Did you spill any of it in the truck that would that would uh, cause an aroma of alcoholic beverage in the truck? Uh, I spilled some on my, myself. On you? Yes. All right. Uh, and then you were, when after all this occurred, uh, there was a Sergeant Anthony Morris. Do you remember that name? Yes, sir. And is he the one who transported you to Edwards' house? No. Uh, well, so somebody from the Mount Washington uh, Police Department gave you a ride to Mr. Hall's house. Uh, it was a tall gentleman about your ages, fit, late 50s. I'd love to be late 50s. <laughs> 60 ish. I'm late 60s. I'll yes, be 69 sir. next week. But he, he, he was. A, Probably six two to six four, kind of bigger man. He had facial hair. Okay, but they didn't arrest you. They gave you a ride to where you were eventually going. Correct? Yes. To Mr. Hall's house. Yes, sir. And uh, I, um, uh, you, you, from your house to where you got stopped, were you speeding? Was the truck speeding? I can't really say. I don't believe so. I wasn't paying attention to that. I, I felt safe at all times. I know that. I just, I wasn't paying attention to his speed. Okay. And, uh, so the only thing you had to drink that night was the 
basically one and a half maybe yes sir. of the of the uh, four logo loco loco yeah. yes never heard of that um, what time did you get to Edward Hall's house uh, if I had to guess I'd say about one one fifteen okay and uh, and how did you get into his house? His front door was unlocked. Okay. Yeah, he, he left. His front door unlocked. Right. No further questions. Okay, thank you. Mr. Foreman? No follow-ups, Your Honor. All right. You can step down, and yes. can he be excused? As far as I'm concerned, yes. Uh, yes, yes. And you're excused, sir. Thank you. Right, Mr. Foreman, any other witnesses? Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls Edward Hall to the stand. And sir, before you have a seat, could I have you to raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you die? I do. Thank you. Let me check. Let me, before we start, let me just check with my jurors. Are you all okay? Do we need to take about a five minute break, or do you want to? I'm looking at you. Five minutes. <laughs> Okay, why don't we take a quick five minute recess and we'll be back in about five minutes. Please be seated. And sir, you can come on up and you've already been placed under oath. And if you'll just have a seat right down there. And go ahead, Mr. Thank you, Your Honor. Could you state your name and address for the record? Edward Lee Hall, Jr. And my address is 176 Caleb Brook Court, Mount Washington. How are you employed, sir? I work as a technician for Carlton Carpet Cleaning and Restoration. And where is that located? It's in J-Town. I want to take you back to the events that transpired on <coughs> the uh, September 14th going on to September 15th of last year, as we've been talking about it extensively. Um, throughout the day and everybody wants to hear what you have to say so could you tell us well, let's start with with that day itself September 14th I think that's a, a Friday last mm -hmm. I checked well uh, I wake up about six o'clock to go to work or get ready to go to work and get there about seven o'clock in the morning and then I get you know everything gas and everything for the work day, make sure I go through my list and make sure everything I have. Then I go to work. I complete my list, and they we could get add-ons and like add, you know go help somebody else. So we never know exactly. I'm a commission-based employee, so I don't know when. I don't get paid by the hour. I get paid by the job. So I don't know when I'm going to get off. Or it's a 24-hour company, so. We can, it's hard to tell. So when I got off about nine, I got to head this to the shop about nine o'clock. When I got there, I stayed there about an hour, just getting my van ready for Monday. You know, <clears throat> dumping it, filling up with water, getting chemicals, padding, cleaning it, checking the oil. About an hour of uh, just regular maintenance. And then uh, I got something to eat at the festival. Uh, I went to the, there's a volleyball court in J-Town called uh, J-Town Beach. I walked over there, they had the chicken, uh, chicken grill, got me a plate. And uh, then Timmy called and said, hey, I thought you was picking me up. I said, I'm on my way. That was about 11.30, I left. Uh, I got done working, actually working at 10.30, about 11.30 I went headed out to pick Timmy up. And when I got there, I was just waiting in the driveway for him. It took him about 10 minutes to get out. And then we went straight to my house, or on the way to my house, when uh, I was passing this park that was, you know, I know I pass this park to and from work every day, and I, I knew it was closed. I know there was a speed limit. But I might have been going a little faster than normal, but I wasn't really paying attention to my speedometer. 
and that's when uh, I passed uh, an officer who turned on his lights, and I didn't know he, I didn't know it till like five seconds of looking up in the mirror, uh, rear view that uh, he turned on his lights and he was turning around. And by that time I came to the stop sign and then I was like, oh, I'm getting pulled over. So I crossed over just to get off the road. And that's when uh, I was approached by an officer who seemed uh, to be like trying to get me for a DUI right from the get go. Like he asked me what I was doing. I, I said I was probably speeding. Gave him all my information and he's like, you've been drinking? I said, no sir, not one drink if I drank. And then uh, he asked me to step out. I stepped out. He uh, asked me to do the eye test, which I told him I have astigmatism. And uh, it, it seemed like it wasn't, that didn't matter at all. And I, I was wearing heavy work, work boots when he asked me to uh, do uh, like the walking test. I didn't feel comfortable with that, uh, with my footwear I was wearing. So uh, I refused that. And by refusing that, I thought I was going to jail anyways. So I went to the station. On the way to the station, I did apologize for speeding. But I, I don't recall, I, I didn't even know I was charged with reckless driving, so I didn't know I was, I didn't know to apologize for that. But when I got to the station, um, I did not, I was in my own thoughts, like, how, how, well, how did I get here, and like, why, why is this happening to me? That I didn't even uh, hear or see what he was doing. He just gives me a piece of paper and uh, I started to read it. He said, uh, it's everything that's happened and we discussed. And I, so I signed it. And what did you all discuss? I did not, not nothing. I guess me going to jail was what we discussed. But that's, I don't know why. Did you sign that piece of paper he gave you? I signed the piece of paper. But I, I don't know what it said. How did this whole ordeal make you feel, Mr. Hall? It makes me feel bad because I didn't know that they were taking uh, my friend to my house, so I didn't know how I was going to feed my dog. I didn't know how I was going to get out or go to work uh, because my work is driving. So if I don't have a license, I can't work. What were you supposed to do the next day? I had a wedding to go to, my friend from work's wedding that I was supposed to do, and Timmy was going to help me with my decking when I was done with it. Timmy is Mr. Mr. Lewis that... Mr. Lewis. Okay. So I think the burning question on everyone's mind is uh, why did you refuse to do any of the physical tests? I felt like they were trying to stick me with a DUI no matter what, and they were just using things to build a case against me and lying about some things. Is what it felt like to me. How long did you spend in jail? I didn't get out till I didn't even know what my bond was till Sunday afternoon. So I was in there from Friday night, Saturday, Sunday night. Afternoon. Did you get out Sunday night? When it started getting dark, when I got out Sunday. So just under 44 hours would it be? Yes. 48, 40, I, I, don't, I can't do math, I'm trying to do it in my head. Um, Do you recall having to report to pretrial yeah. after you got arrested? Upon my condition of my $2,000 release, I had to 
the very next day report to pre-trial services, which is random drug testing. I got a call every day and uh, stipulations to what I felt like if I messed up, they would keep my 2000 cash bond. So I was randomly getting drug, drug tested. I actually had to take a random drug test that Wednesday. So I got out, got my truck out for $200 had to sign up for pretrial services and then I got a drug test, which I passed. And then it's $25 without a license, it's $25 every time I took a piss test and it was, that went on for about seven months. Can I approach the witness judge? Yes, you may. Do you recognize this piece of paper, Mr. Hall? Yes, sir. Could you Tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury what that is. This is uh, my very first uh, accurate drug and DNA testing uh, drug test I took. And what were the results of that test? All negative. With uh, respect to drugs? To any drugs that they have on this 12, 12 drugs they got listed. And you said you had to do that for seven months? Um, since our release, uh, I think it was either May or a April, May was when I no longer had to do it. Your Honor, defense moves to admit as defense exhibit A. Any objection? I don't know the relevance, Judge, but yes, I, I don't object. All right, this will, be, in, well, this will be admitted as defendant's exhibit A. Thank you, Your Honor. You do not have any video or audio equipment in your own vehicle, do you? No, sir. No further questions. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. Charles, you uh, you stated that you went to work. You got up about six o'clock in the morning on the fourteenth of September. And went to work, and you were there by seven. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And stayed till about nine. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, and how all right. No, I got at nine thirty. I got the okay, or around nine. I got the head to the shop. So it took me about thirty minutes to actually get to right. the shop. Then I've got my notes say you stayed till about ten, and then you went out to the Gaslight Festival. No, I, I stayed at the shop doing my truck maintenance from when I got there about 9.30 to about 10.30. It took me about an hour to get ready for Monday's work. All right. Where, it, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name of the carpet cleaning and restoration. Kaufman Carpet Cleaning. Kaufman? Kaufman. Spelled with a C or a K. K. And where in J-Town exactly is it located? It's, uh... Taylorsville, it's on Taylorsville Road, uh, it's right by Watterson Trail, police station, that's where they act. That, right. that's, that's where the Gaslight Festival is yeah. held, it's right yeah. down Yeah, so I have, to, I have to do the local access to get to the park. Backside. back side. Yeah. yeah, and then the people have to let me through. All right. Um, this drug testing, uh, sheet that you turned in uh, is dated September 19th. Is that correct? Um, um, so you copy my copy? Uh, yes, I guess. Uh, that's what it says. September 19th, yes. All right, so that's five days, I'm sorry, four days after this occurred, correct? Yes. All right, and you weren't in jail on Friday. You, you were arrested on Saturday morning, is that correct? And got out on Sunday night. Yeah. I considered it still Friday because it's yeah, still right. gone. Technically, it was Saturday morning after midnight. Technically. Okay. Um, and you say you ate at the Gaslight Festival. Did you have anything to drink? Uh, water. Did anybody spill any alcoholic beverages on you while you were at the Gaslight Festival? No, sir. Did you say yes or no? No, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Um, <laughs> And then uh, you went to Timmy's house, which is in the Hillview area, correct? 
It's in the high view area. High view. Okay. And picked him up, and then you were driving down Park View. Yeah, Park you, View is the road I got arrested. In. Right. You drive that area often? I drive it every day to and from work. To and from your house to, uh, to work and back? Yes. All right. So you know the area well? Yes. All right. And um, the officer says that after on the way to Bullock County Corrections, which is uh, the above subject stated in this quotations, I should not have been speeding and driving reckless. Did you I, make that statement? No, I, my statement I made was I apologize for speeding. Okay, you didn't say anything about reckless? I did not know I was being charged with reckless. They didn't inform you of what they, what they were charging you with? I, I know they was arresting me for refusing to submit to uh, the right. test. That in itself is not a crime. Refusing to, to submit to the field sobriety test or anything like or even refusing to submit to the, the blood test at the jail is not a crime. You understand that? Yes. So, so what they were charging you with was, was driving drunk driving. Under, yes. Or driving under the influence. Yes. All right. You understood that? Yeah, I knew that's what. Okay. So if you had if you had not had anything to drink at all that day, that you've been up at six o'clock in the morning, you worked all day, you you got back to the shop, you started to to get your truck ready for Monday to prep it. I understand that. I, I used to work for Bowl and Oil Lumber Company. Did it all the time. Um, then you went to eat and had water. Why would you, when you got to the jail, not take the blood test? I I did not know that that was offered. I wouldn't take a blood test anyways, even if I thought it was offered, because I wouldn't take a blood test in a jail. I just, Explain to me why. Because it's a, uh, there's staph infection in jails, and it just don't seem like something I would be right. the, okay with. The officer, you recognize this officer here, yes. Mr. Yes. Officer Norris? He's, he's the one who transported you to jail. Yes. When you got to the jail, did you did he not read you that piece of paper you're talking about? Uh, he might have read it, but I didn't. I wasn't paying attention because I was just worried about my job. My I was in my own thoughts at that time. Okay. In that in, on that piece of paper, what he's reading it to you, and he's reading it from a piece of paper that he took from the jail, mm -hmm. that, that explains to you what's going to happen now. That, yeah. that it's called an implied consent. You mm -hmm. understand that? Yes. That, I know. You, that you're going to be offered, I'm going to ask you to take a blood, breath, or urine test, and, and uh, if, you submit, if you submit to it, it can be used against you. If you don't submit to it, that can be used against you. Yeah. You didn't hear any of that? No, I didn't. I, I, he didn't. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to be honest with it because I did sign that uh, a piece of paper, but he didn't have it as evidence. Like I didn't have to like even talk about it. I didn't think to, but I was just telling, letting y'all know honestly that I did sign a piece of paper. Okay. I don't know if it's that piece of paper. During that during that conversation he had with you, while he, after he finished reading three quarters of that piece of paper, did, did, well, let me ask you a question. Did he tell you, you had 10 to 15 minutes to contact a lawyer? I don't recall. Did you attempt to contact the lawyer? They gave me a phone card called or a phone card to be used that I would I was saving until I knew what to call and tell them. Okay, so somebody. so so when when he was doing that, he gave you the ability to contact somebody by telephone. Oh uh, well, that a phone call card was actually expired when I ended up using it on Sunday, so. It wouldn't have done Maybe it only lasted for the day that you got it, which was Saturday. But as a practical matter, they gave you the ability to contact a lawyer, to contact, actually to contact anybody, to, to attempt to contact a lawyer. I don't know any lawyers. I understand that, but you could have called. Um, do you have a family here? Yeah, I, they took my cell phone. Like, I, I understand that, have, but they gave you a, um, a card that you can use at the jail on their telephones to call somebody to say, I've been arrested, try to get me a lawyer, try to give me a number of a lawyer I can contact in order to talk to them right now. They gave you that ability. 
I assume I have the right for a phone call. Yes. And you did not exercise that I until the not, next day? Not till, no, not till Sunday. Till, that's when they told me what it was. Every time they come to give me a plate of food, I ask them, what, do I have a bond? Or I did not know nothing. Till the Sunday night, they said $2,000 cash, Edward Hall. And then that's when I actually made my first phone call. Okay. Was I needed to figure out what to do or what to tell people. But when when Officer Norris was reading you that piece of paper, you weren't paying attention to it. I didn't. I didn't. not know what he. I, I do not recall him reading the piece of paper. I don't. Re, I don't recall. You said. You said he. You just a second ago. Just we said were sitting he did. in the room. I mean, I don't recall what he said or what was going on. I was in my own thoughts. Okay. So when I say that you were not paying attention to what he said, yes. that's true. Yes. All right, because you were in your own thoughts, mm -hmm. and and when he gave you the ability to to take a test to prove to this jury that you were not intoxicated, that you didn't have any alcohol in your system at all, you refused to take it. I I don't recall him ever asking me to take a blood test uh, in, or any kind of test at the station. I just was in my own thoughts. He gives me a piece of paper. I signed a piece of paper. I, I don't know what it said. Okay. Did you take a breath test? No. Did you take a blood test? No. And we just did you take a urine test? No. Now you other than these that you took on pre-trial. I t I took. But I'm talking about that night, that, that Saturday I took morning. Took a vision test. Right. The the, the HGN vision. test you did yes. go through. Yes. All right. When, uh, now now let's go back to that HGN test. Did you complete that test? I thought I did. Okay, you did. How, how many times did he make a pass? With he used his finger. I always use a pen, but but uh, how many times did he pass by that you were looking? Objection, uh, Your Honor. I don't think the witness is qualified to answer that question. Uh, the question was how many times. It's not whether or not he's qualified. To... I'm going to overrule the objection. All right. If you know how many passes did he make with his finger? I think he went he took he went this way twice and this way twice. Okay. And um, when he was gonna do it again, you didn't you stopped the test, is that correct? I, I informed him of my natural astigmatism and it that didn't matter to him. Okay. When he asked you to do a one leg stand, you refused to do it. Yeah, I I didn't think I would have proper balance to do any kind of walking with my work boots. I was well, there's no walking involved in a one leg stand. It's just standing I'm still. I'm pretty sure I was asked to do the walk. And walk turn and turn, turn first. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. So when he asked you to do the walk and turn, you didn't do it because of the boots you had on, or yes. What kind of boots did you have on? I had, I actually, had, I had big heavy boots where they were wore down and they were falling apart pretty much. Okay, but they're your work boots. You go to work in them every day, correct? Yeah, I work in them, but I don't, like, have to keep my balance as good as I would during the, for a test. Okay. Um, do you still use those boots today? I mean, you, no. when you went to work yesterday, did you wear those boots? No, I had two pairs of boots since then. Okay. It has been a while, hasn't it? Um, when when Timmy was riding in your truck after you picked him up before you got stopped, did he spill his drink? I wasn't paying attention to him. All right. Do you know if there was any alcohol spilled in your truck that would, uh, know would give off the odor of alcohol? I know he had a cup of alcohol when he got in it. All right. Um, I have no further questions. Sir. Thank you so much. Mr. Foreman, any other questions? Um, if I may have one moment, Judge. Go ahead.
I don't have anything further. All right. Sir, you can step down. Yes, Thank you. Mr. Foreman, any other witnesses? No, that concludes the case for the defense judge. Thank you. Before we... Commonwealth has no more questions. Okay. Before we get into closing arguments, I'm going to read the jury instructions. We may approach, Judge. Come forward, please. Thank you. Thank you. 